I met a gypsy. How's the, I guess, the technology, how has it changed since you've obviously a lot but can you see you know the is it like an exponential curve is it like a linear curve of of the way the technology is changing uh, the way that the body can recover is it ramping up quicker than ever before do you think or is it still a similar process uh no i think i think i think it's probably pretty linear in that it takes it takes a lot of processes, you know, steps. Is that, in that through litiga- litigation more than technology? Oh, I just think it's in. Um, it, it's not necessarily based on ideas. It's based on how quickly you can get an idea to yeah to that point. And 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 um, uh, I, I I don't know that you've necessarily seen an explosion of change. Because um, you'd kind of assume that would be as technology gets better, you'd assume that you know the way that we see tech change and the kind of leaps and bounds that the tech world yeah. has like it's not the case in the medical world in a sense not not so much because it takes a lot you can't just develop an idea and run with it you've yep. got a, it's a whole process of actually getting it there so i think it slows it down a lot but but yeah, it's an interesting process so uh, and something we want to get more involved in so so what were we talking about the i guess just how like technology yeah. how, like how you see it kind of changing i mean it, it because it's one of those things where you just see like technology has kind of changed everything and it sort of comes in like this massive sort of wave, you know, like you almost blink and, and everything's different. Do you see any of that sort of stuff kind of coming in the future? Absolutely. Like and, 3D and, printing and, you know. Yeah, look, we already 3D print parts and, and, and order custom prostheses. I mean, if there's somebody that's got a very specific defect, you can um, you can sit with the engineers and actually design a piece to fit what they're missing. Um, and uh, um, yeah, you know, with it's a work in progress. You know, yeah. that that will improve a lot over time. But that that ability is still there. A lot of the original work with that actually was done at Queensland Uni. Really, with um, you know, printing of um, uh, pieces for skulls and and to put in, and, and a lot of it came from that. So, um, so yeah, we do three D print. We do. Um, you know, there's not a lot of places for robotics yet in in upper limb, but there is in lower limb. Like a, a lot of that stuff starts in lower limb surgery because there's more of it. Yeah. You okay. know, say um, for example, knee replacements and hip replacements. You know, there's thousands and thousands done every year in Australia. Well, there's about 150 elbow replacements or that sort of. Oh, really? Done in Australia a year. So huh. the numbers are quite different, and so the tech often flows from you know. Yeah. Yeah. This yep. company obviously wants return on their investment yeah so the prosthetic companies obviously put a lot of money into developing it for say a knee and then that'll flow through and 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 we'll develop it like we're already using a lot of um we're talking about it before using the um the navigation to yep. help and the navigation is really helpful um robotics is still finding its place and what it's good for and what it's not good for and and there's not much scope in upper limb yet but that's coming that'd be one of the next things we we may have to adopt and or not have to but you know like arthroscope uh more more for things like joint replacement you know where okay. um you know i said to you before you might have sat the night before and 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 planned an operation this is where i want to put the prosthesis well where the robot comes in is when you actually get to that process um to get to that point in the operation you can ask the robot to do the cut for you so it's accurate you know yep. it's right on exactly what you planned and and then you have to evaluate well you know, did we actually get benefit out of using that robot? Like, did it actually help the end outcome? And and that's and that's what happened has happened with the knee surgeons when you talk to them. Robots are available, and they've worked out that these are the cases it helps for, and these are the cases it doesn't help for. And so, there's always new technology coming through, and you've got to work out what's going to work. Um, there's a lot of uh, investment in biological type implants at the yeah, moment. Yeah, because you'd like, think that would be kind of massive, right? Oh, look, if that if, if that's generally where we're headed. You know, if, yeah. you, if you can get a biological implant to do something to actually get it to repair itself, yeah. that's, that's obviously the ideal way to treat things. We're a long way off being at that level, but, you know, we can grow tenocytes, we can grow cartilage cells, chond- yeah. chondrocytes, you know. Um, you can you can implant them. We can. Um, they're making a lot of collagen patches now to augment things, and, and they're almost like a collagen sponge to suck up uh, you know blood products and things, and, and apply to the outside of tendons to try and encourage them to heal better. Yeah, and, right. Um, they're working on fibroblast growth factors, and all of that sort of stuff will come in over the next 
10 or 15 years that I'll probably see a lot of that in my working lifetime, hopefully. So, uh, And yeah, like, so if you have to get a little bit sci-fi for a minute, hmm. what, where do you realistically see it going? And I mean, it can be a reach and it can be a stretch, like a, a sci-fi, but where do you kind of like realistically like i could actually see this being a thing one day oh look in my lifetime i can see it being a thing of you know if you needed a tendon repair like you say your rotator cuff yeah that we would um, which i have actually one of those injuries there you go so I, I, the time will come where we harvest some of your own tendon we grow your cells and then that's impregnated into a piece of you know collagen sponge or um, similar that that has probably fibroblast growth factors and those sorts of things impregnated in it as well, and and as part of the repair, you might sew the tendon back together and then apply this to actually accelerate the healing and make it bit bigger, better, stronger when it's finished. And that that technology is not that far away. That's something that we'll see in our lifetimes. Um, the, the stage beyond that is when you're actually growing body parts and things. I mean that that will Do you come think one that day. Will happen? Oh, eventually, yeah. Whether they can grow a knee or something i don't know but they can probably grow organs yeah and things so that's that's going to come and how do you think that process will happen um one of the things that we've seen with the orthopedic things like tenocytes and things and and chondrocytes especially has been an issue that um they can already grow so that, chondrocytes that, is cartilage the cartilage yeah, yeah. so so they can already grow the tissue. You know, the, the technology is there. You can send it, they can grow it in a lab and give you cartilage back. The, and that would seem to be the hard bit, but that's the bit they've conquered. The, yeah. the, the bit that's more difficult is how do you use that tissue? Mm. So it, it's a bit akin to, you know, if you take your um, tire in for a retread and the guy gives you the rubber yeah, in, like in your I've hand. Yeah, I've got the rubber. Yeah, yeah and you go, yeah. Well, well, that doesn't help. Yeah. Oh, I, how do I get that to stick to the outside of my tire and function? Well, fortunately, they know how to do that, but we don't. Like, we don't know how to reattach the cartilage well enough to make it work. And yeah. there's lots of people have tried lots of different ways, you know, whether it be um, cells under a membrane or whether it be um, plugs of cartilage put in, almost, you know, like you're doing a, oh, like a hair, hair transplant. transplant. Yeah, 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 people have tried that, and um, none of them have been great so far. So that's they're, they're the bits that have got to be ironed out, and that takes – a lot of trial and error and, yeah. and, and practice and people got to do studies and then to find out if it works or not then takes an enormous amount of time. It's not like they show you the tyre and you can see the rubbers attached. It might take years before you know that what you've done has actually helped mm. that patient. And so to evaluate it and come up and say, yeah, we've worked out that method A works better than method B, C and D. Might take 15 years. Might take decades. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. It can be a really slow process, but the tech's there. It's and they're all they're all working on. It. The companies all want to produce the next big thing. Yeah, well, I mean, that's I guess the the beauty of the kind of system that we live in is that you know you get these companies they make big money off off these life changing products. So it's there's a lot of investment that would go into that sector. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's exciting. Like it's great to go and see what they've got, and um, you know when you go to conferences and things and wander around you look at the talks you look at the new products and and then you decide what you want to adopt and what you might want to try out and you know it, it's it keeps us interested you know yeah. if you enjoyed this content please like and subscribe and to listen to the full three-hour podcast search gypsy tales in your favorite podcast platform or click the link in the description below gypsy gang